So as you can see, I've got a Tesla Model 3 and I've also got a Ford Fusion, but it's a special one. It's a plug-in hybrid called an Energy, which they no longer produce. But the point of this video isn't to explain the Ford, it's to explain plug-in hybrids and what their advantages are. And we're going to show you that even in a situation where you're driving a lot of kilometers, which is what I'm gonna to do today, that a plug-in hybrid is very, very helpful. Here are the settings for my plug-in hybrid uh, on the dashboard. And as you can see, it says I've got about 23 kilometers of electric range. Now, unlike uh, my Tesla, that number changes uh, every day based on what the previous uh, driving was. So if you were driving in the city, that number would be as high as 35, but I'm doing a highway uh, driving and uh, it's a little cooler today, so it's dropped down. The curve on the left is the gas engine. You can see the little gas engine icon at the top and the little uh, curve in the middle with the little bit of blue on it right now is what is being used for electric charge. And right now it's just setting itself up. You can see it's dropping off a bit. So let's get out of here. I temporarily am working on the very far side of the city from where I live. And so what's happening is instead of driving my normal 22 kilometers to work, I'm now driving uh, 45 kilometers to work. And as a result, that plug-in hybrid portion, uh, the uh, battery uh, does not get me all the way there. It only gets me about half the way there in the morning. And at night when I come back, it gets me nothing at all. And you think, well, then that sort of defeats the purpose of having a plug-in hybrid, doesn't it? Nope, and you'll see why as we go. So I'm just gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit and wait. Now the uh, battery, the regular uh, battery consumption for the plug-in hybrid portion is done and now it's simply acting as a hybrid. So a couple of years ago I drove uh, 22 kilometers into work and 22 kilometers back and then you know you've got to drive the kids here and there but whatever else but generally speaking uh, it was, I just used that vehicle for work and with my plug-in hybrid being able to plug in both at home and at work, I ran from the end of February until the start of October on a single 40 liter tank of gas. Let's see what happens now that the plug-in portion has been consumed and it's down now down to just acting like a hybrid, which means uh, it's got maybe, um, that little blue bar indicates that it might have, I don't know, two kilometers of electric, something like that. I'm completely making that number up. You could look up the official number from Ford, but it's something like that. And, you know, what possible good could that be on a drive? And you'll see that when we uh, turn around and come back uh, at the end of the day, that when I'm going downhill in particular, and I don't mean downhill like a steep hill, I'm talking about a gentle, uh, uh, you know, uh, decline, that the battery will be all that's used and the gasoline engine will actually turn off and, and uh, it just won't turn down it just won't improve your gas mileage it'll turn it off so it goes to zero and that's pretty nice now right now this there's this crazy headwind so it's not going to do it this minute but it normally would uh, even on this hill which well it's not a hill this gentle decline uh, but again the wind is just so strong right now There, even on this gentle decline with this nutty headwind, the gasoline engine has now turned off and we are running purely on electric, going down this very gentle decline. Now, 
this is probably the worst example I could possibly give you. This is as bad as it has ever been, short of a very cold winter day driving through snow. Um, in that uh, this this really strong wind is just killing the performance of the car. Now, in fairness, it's going to do the same to your gas car. So you know it's going to make the driving on the of the gas much harder. You're you're you'll actually have a notable decrease in your uh, fuel economy. And you'll notice, and it's hard to see, I realize, but at the top of this little blue bar, there's an up arrow. That means it's charging. When the uh, battery, when there's a, an arrow at the bottom, it means it's consuming it. And uh, if you see two circles spinning around, that means that there's uh, some active uh, braking, uh, which is, of course, creating uh, regeneration. So if I touch the brakes a little bit, or the system, I have it in uh, low, which is where I typically drive it in, so I get one pedal driving, uh, then uh, what happens is it will, here I'll do it. So you'll press that and you'll see that it spins. So there, it just kicked, it just, even on this gentle decline with this nutty headwind and normally that, this little hill would have provided, it's not a hill, it's just this decline, would have had the car kick into uh, uh, battery mode uh, much earlier, but because of the wind, it just wouldn't do it. And uh, and you think, is the wind really that strong? Yeah, the wind is really that strong. <laughs> Welcome to Calgary. It's, uh, we get wind. It'll change to uh, battery only. There it is. And you'll also notice how smooth it is. You have no idea that it's changing over. You don't feel it in the car at all. Uh, if you weren't the driver where you're sort of paying attention to the tiny amount of noise that the engine makes in this uh, beautifully quieted uh, Ford. Something to note, by the way, that uh, I've had to ask a few times is, well, you know, if you're just using the gasoline engine to produce electricity, What's the advantage to that? Uh, you know, it's just it's inefficient. And in fact, that's not what happens. The uh, gasoline engine never, yeah, the gasoline engine, I think it's fair to say, never gets it right. It always produces too much power. And so uh, what the system does is it just blows it off normally in a normal car. You know, your, your, uh, your, your typical 12 volt battery is full and um, it just literally wastes the, the electricity. Uh, so that uh, because it has no place to store it and it doesn't do anything with it. Well, with a plug-in hybrid, you've got a nice big battery that it can reload. And that, that electricity is not wasted. That energy is not wasted. So no, it is not running the gasoline engine just to produce um, electricity. It is uh, running the gasoline engine uh, because it needs to run the gasoline engine. And it's simply capturing the waste. The other uh, big advantage is uh, regenerative braking, right? When you reach, when you press your uh, gas pedal, well, in my case, when I press my uh, brake pedal, in every vehicle except a Tesla that I've driven that's a plug-in hybrid, or that's an electric car, when you touch the brakes, it actually doesn't engage the calipers. What it, enca what it engages is the, el the electric motor, and what it's doing is it, it runs the electric motor so that it's charging the battery rather than consuming electricity from the battery. Very nice system. And in the better systems like this Ford and my uh, GMs that I've had, uh, you can't t feel when the regenerative braking kicks out and the calipers kick in. So in town is where a hybrid shines. All right, so I'm gonna turn the car off and let's see what it comes up with for numbers. And keep in mind, this is as bad as it will ever be. That was really horrible. So I got about half of my drive on EV and a uh, just a one kilometer of regen on the brakes. So that's 1.6 liters of gas that I used, which is about a third of a gallon. That means I got 3.6 liters per hundred, which is about 80 miles per gallon. Not too shabby. I'm just out getting some lunch and I have been on electric for the vast majority of it. You can see in the bottom left, there is no gas running. All right, let's start it up and see where we are. So I have 
precious little electric left. As you can see, I'm right down at the bottom. Uh, and as you can hear, the fan is turned on, the air conditioning's on, and we're moving. The engine, yeah, there it is, the engine's turning on. Okay, let's go home. So even having virtually no electricity left, we got 19.6 out of 45 and a change. So I'm gonna call that 45% of our mileage was done on electric. That included two kilometers of regen. So which is better, my 2014 Ford Fusion Energy or my 2021 Tesla. Well, without any debate, Tesla is a better product. No argument. But there is a place for these plug-in hybrids, and they do much more than what people think they do. One of the big concerns with the plug-in hybrid is the warranty and uh, the battery. People say, well, it's so complex and there's so much to go wrong. And my response is always, I couldn't care less. Uh, that 2014 Ford, like 100% of EV plug-ins, has an eight year warranty on the powertrain. So I couldn't care less if the battery blows up. I couldn't care less if there's a charging problem. By the way, I've owned four uh, plug-in hybrids and I've never had a problem. I've also talked with dozens, if not hundreds of people with plug-in hybrids. And yes, there are going to be problems, but I personally have never once spoken to somebody who had a failure uh, with the powertrain uh, or any, for that matter, any real notable problem. Uh, problems will occur. I'm not saying that they that they won't, but this just doesn't seem to be a problem. Please put your comments below, and we'll get back to you usually within a day. If you like this video, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. And if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We really try to avoid politics and the random opinion claims of either fanboys or political partisans. We try to stick with facts. And if you have any other questions and concerns, you can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks.